When it comes to biblical scripture, the fine details are important. I know there are probably many of you who have read books like Genesis more than once. Maybe some of you have lost count. But no matter how many times you read it, if you do not take your time to investigate what seems to be an irrelevant or minute detail, then you will miss something. You will have a significant piece missing from the story. We've heard and read the stories of fallen angels taking wives who would give birth and rise to the Nephilim. And when we research and learn of these giants, these men of renown that once roamed the earth, it is not very often that you get information about their parents. Of course, the fathers would be the fallen angels, but what about the mothers who were human? Who were they? Whose daughters were these women? Well, there may be a woman who is named in scripture that could have been the first mother of the Nephilim, and her name is Nama. I know there are many of you who have been curious about the details as to how the Nephilim were born into this world and for what purpose, but we can look through the very beginning of the book of Genesis to answer part of that question, because it all started with a rebellion that led to a conquest to destroy any possibility of Jesus being born. And of course, the devil is in the details. I want you guys to think about something. We have an understanding that when God created man, he placed man in a paradise garden. He also placed the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden with the man and tells the man, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So if you're Adam, you're probably thinking, there is this tree of knowledge of good and evil, and if I eat from it, I'm going to die. So, why is it here in the first place? Think about this, folks. The whole time Adam was there alone, he was not tempted by this tree. Eve is not there yet. She comes in a few verses later. Besides, Adam had to be around for quite some time to go around naming things, right? So, if that tree was not there to tempt Adam, why was it placed there? Was it placed there to tempt Eve? Or was it placed there to tempt the devil? Well, ask yourself this question. If the devil did not tempt Eve, would she have eventually eaten from the tree without any outside influence anyway? What would the devil have to trick Eve if that tree wasn't there? Because the devil's agenda was to corrupt those two. You guys ever wonder what the devil's role would be if he wasn't the devil? Can you imagine if he never rebelled? But he did. And that is probably why the tree was there to begin with. Because the warning is in the name of the tree. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Life and death. Do you see? So, because of what happened in that garden, God was going to have this corrected by the birth of the Messiah. The devil knew that. And so it became his conquest 
to defile, dehumanize, corrupt, and destroy man. So that would not occur. And that is why right from the first few children of Adam and Eve, you have these strong spiritual attacks on them. And you can see this happening over and over again to Adam's first few descendants. And so on. So, getting to this, in Cain's lineage, you have Lamech. Not the Lamech from Seth's lineage. Isn't that interesting? As to how Cain's children and Seth's children share some of the same names. So, we have the good family and the bad family. Right? Now, Lamech from the bad family has some kids. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other, Zillah. Which he wasn't supposed to do, by the way, taking two wives. So, now that you know what he's about, you can probably tell what his children are going to be about. And Ada bare Jabal. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jabal. He was the father of all such as Handel, the harp, and organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal-Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal-Cain was Nema, who was known to be quite beautiful. That is actually what her name translates to beauty now Noah had his wife but the Bible does not name her in Jewish tradition Nama is made out to be Noah's wife but in Jewish magical and Kabbalistic text she is a demon and not just any demon the mother of demons there are different versions or interpretations about who Nema was. The way I understand it is, at this point in Genesis, there are no demons, only fallen angels, because the Nephilim haven't been born yet. Once the Nephilim are born and then later start dying, then you have demons. And this may be one of the reasons why she would be connected to being the first to give birth to a child hybrid the demon version of Nehemiah had a son named Ashmedai keep that name in mind so now this beautiful woman who is named after beauty is not going to get away with not having children so the question is who are her children because Cain's lineage kind of stops right there or maybe she became Noah's wife after all, and Noah's lineage is Nema's lineage. Look, somebody here slept with an alien, and I want to know who. And yes, I'm looking at Nema. She was the hottest one there, and you know how those angels like hot women, right? Anyway, does any of this add up? Because to create all these Nephilim, we are missing a big chunk of people here. See, we know where Seth's side of the family ends up, but we don't know where Cain's family ends up except killed in the flood. And so it is suggested that the women the fallen angels took as wives were from the daughters of Cain's lineage, daughters of Nema, since her children would resemble her, right? She would likely have beautiful daughters. Now, remember I mentioned Ashmedai, the prince of demons. Well, in the Babylonian Talmud, there is the story of Solomon and the demon king Ashmedai. A story that involves a magic ring and a shape-shifting demon. In the days of Solomon, Ashmedai would be a demon. But in the days of Noah, he would be the first giant. And who but Solomon would be granted control over the demon king? So let's say that Nehemiah was the first to be impregnated by one of these fallen angels. And let's say Ashmedai 
was the first giant. And after he died, he became a demon that has a history with Solomon. So who would be the first fallen angel to impregnate Nema? In the book of Giants, it tells us that Barquel was one of the leading angels that came down to take women. And his son was a giant named Mawa. So we know that he belongs to the group of angels known as the Watchers or the Gregory in the book of Enoch. And in the book of Enoch it says, And Semyaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath. And all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were all in two hundred who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. <laughs> Now there is a story that says Semyaza took a woman named Lilith. In another story, Semyaza took a woman named Ishtar. In another story, Lilith is the prostitute for Ishtar, or the Sumerian Inanna. Are you confused yet? No worries, I'm just showing you a few connections that comes from different sources. Ishtar, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, is the goddess who tried to seduce Gilgamesh into marrying her. But Gilgamesh turned her down, I guess because she seemed a bit loose. She is known to be the goddess of love, sex, good harvest, war, lust, and beauty. Understand that Gilgamesh was the king of the city Yurk, which started off as the city of Enoch. So those were just some interesting details that I thought I would dig up for you guys to look further into and have some fun with that. Let me know what you guys think. If you found any information that was different or have heard a different story, let me know in the comments below. There is more to come. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at jwoodward. And until next time, as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.